Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new channel where all I am here to do is deliver no-nonsense guides specifically for Call of Duty Zombies Easter Eggs. So, I made this channel specifically to combat the old, outdated guides that half the time are just completely wrong with a lot of these older Zombies maps, and I'm trying to change the game and just make it completely and utterly no-nonsense just for you. You're going to know all what you need to know, and that's all you're going to need to know from me, and that's all I'm going to tell you. Today, we're going to be going over the Black Ops 2 Victus maps with the Richthofen Super Easter Egg in mind. So this is going to include all maps of Transit, Die Rise, and Buried with their steps, as well as the inclusion of the parts for things like the nav card machines on each map. And I'm going to be doing this for you so that you know what you need to know going into it, and I'm going to do a little prelude for each map as well. First things first, we have to explain the nav cards inside of Black Ops 2. Now... If you know anything about the Super Easter Egg for the Victus maps, you know they're connected via Easter Eggs and Nav Cards. Now, I'm going to show you the locations coming up here in a bit, but essentially all you need to know is that the Buried Nav Card goes into the Transit Nav Card table. The Transit Nav Card goes inside the Die Rise Nav Card table, and then the Die Rise Nav Card goes inside of the Buried Nav Card table. And during each of these Easter Egg run-throughs, all you have to do is have the correct nav card and place it into the table once you build it. And it'll say, that is the correct nav card, and then it won't let you interact with the table anymore for that map. And once you complete an Easter Egg, it will look like this. It will have blue for Richthofen, it will have orange for Maxis, but it will also ping, as in the nav card is placed in the right nav card. Just had to keep that in this prelude but we're going to go on to now the nav card locations. Now, the transit one is one of the easier nav cards to grab because all you have to do is just go out this door next to the bus and you'll fly down this little back area and it'll be next to this pile of trash. It'll say hold F to take nav card. You can't actually see these on the ground, but they have the prompts and the one pixel to grab them. Now, the nav card on die rise is just down from the spawn room. If you open these two barriers right here, you'll come across, there's the spire, and then it'll be in your left, it'll say hold F to take nav card on this little crate, or display case I should say, and yes, that's where the die rise one is. Inside of buried, you're going to go into the back end of the witch's house, go down here, don't mind the witches, I mean you really only need to go to this bookshelf, You'll it'll have a prompt and you can pick up what looks to be a PSP looking thing in the corner there if that doesn't tell you my age. Now that we've gone over all the nav card locations I'm going to go into each map but first I'm going to show you with each map when I bring it up where the nav card parts are and where to build it. Obviously on transit the nav card location is underneath the pylon which is in between the farm and power and it's in this cornfield there's just a little maze you gotta go through to get to it and there'll be like one pixel on the wall that you can add all these parts to and then I'm going to show you where all four parts are they're gonna be pretty quick but I'll describe where they are at each point and the first part is going to be a meteor that's gonna be right here it'll pr say press F to pick a part and you will pick up this part the next part for the nav card table is a radio and the radio can either spawn inside of here in the diner on top of this little cabinet you'll have to jump to pick it up the second part location for the radio is inside of Nocturne and Toten. It can spawn on this little leaned over file cabinet here. The third part, which is the electrical box, can either spawn here in farm, if you go up these doors, it'll be on this back wall, or it will be in the back of town, besides this dumpster right here. So the fourth and final part of the nav card table, which is the wooden board, can either spawn here inside of the tunnel. It'll usually be on this area, this kind of line of stuff by the M16 wall by. And funnily enough, it's by a jet gun piece, which we'll cover later. So that's the first location, or it can be here in the power. It'll be on the side right here, right here. You'll see it on usually on this uh, box as well. 
Now, again, the place to build it is here underneath the pylon. You'll take each of the four parts one at a time to this little area, add it, and it'll start building the table. And then once you're done, it'll make a completion noise, and it'll say hold F to insert nav card instead of hold F to add part. And once that's done, that stays throughout all of your games now. If you, if you did it by yourself, you, every solo game you have on transit, this will be built, unless you somehow lose your game save data file. But... That's not going to happen. So you're pretty much going to have this the rest of your BO2 career. And that's the nice part about it. You only have to build this once. Starting off the discussion of the transit easter egg, there are going to be a couple things you need as like a prelude from the box. So you're going to need one, an explosive weapon, and two, you're also going to need EMP grenades. Now with that, the explosive weapon can be the ray gun, it could be the RPG, it could be the war machine if you're into that. But anything as long as it's explosive. And that's all you have to get from the box. Now, the first step to any easter egg is to start by turning on the power. Now, in transit, the power is underneath this porta potty area. If you don't know where the power room is, you might want to play transit a little more before attempting the easter egg. But you pick up the one panel, which is usually outside, but... They can be all over this room, but most of the time the forks are in the actual power room next to the table on a little... You'll see these parts. You'll see them. Now the hand is a little different. It could be either right in front of the staircase or it could be further ahead on the left uh, of the power. But once you get all three of those parts and construct the power, you're going to turn it on. And you'll know that it's done when this little sequence with the Avogadro is over. And... What I mean by this little sequence is that if you walk out into the main area, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get shocked. And I think after a while, it will kill you, although I'm not sure. I wouldn't try it, but basically the Avogadro starts coming out, and as you can see, yeah, it shocks you with that little animation. But once it's done, Rick Toffin will start talking to you if you're playing as Samuel. Uh, by the way, also, there's one of the hand parts as well. It could be over there in that far corner. Check there if you can't find it anywhere else. But you'll go through this door and then the power's on. So that's step one. Now, step two is going to be starting the build on the jet gun. You're going to need the jet gun for step two. And I say starting the build because it really depends on that. Now, the first part can be at that little ledge over there. The second area could be in this little bridge area. And the third area, which is where it was in my game, the wire spawned on that barrel there. Now, with that, you're going to take it to the actual area inside of the town and find it inside of this building with stamina up. You're just going to open it up. It's going to be on the table. You can start placing your parts there. Now, the second part of the jet gun is by the interlude between town and power, and you're going to find it in this little cabin out here. If you're on PC, I would recommend turning off the fog if you can, but if you can't, it's okay. Now, it'll be inside of this room. It'll be this little dial, you'll pick it, hold F to pick a part, and you'll go add it to the table in town. And that's part two. Now, the third part of the jet gun is found inside of the tunnel where we looked at the board for the nav card table. And it could either be over there, you'll see it, it's a giant jet turbine. Or it could be somewhere back here. Or it could be in that section right here, which it was. Or it could be a little bit further down inside of this back corner right here. I would check all locations, just kind of scour the area, and you'll find it. And with that, that is the third part for the jet gun. Add it to the table. And then one more final part, which will be inside of Nocturne on Toten. Now, inside of Nocturne on Toten, the handle to the jet gun can either be found here, which it was in my game. Or it could be found on this filing cabinet over in the left side of Nocturne and Toten. Or it could be found on this shelf right over here on the right. It always spawns in one of those three locations. And then with that, we can come over and add the fourth and final part of the handle to the jet gun. And then, oh yeah, we could take the jet gun. And actually, it's funnily enough, oh yeah is what the text you've originally said on release of this game. Now, with that, you're going to take it to the pylon. Now, once you're at the pylon with the jet gun, all you have to do is take it out. Yes, bear with me here, folks. And shoot it towards the top of the pylon until it breaks. Yes, I know. Absolutely all that work for nothing. But 
that's what we have to do. That is step two. Now, once that's broken, Richtofen should give you another quote if you're Samuel. But if not, if you're not playing as Samuel, all you got to do is get 20 kills under this pylon for step three. With the ray gun, with your explosive weapon, it could be the RPG, it could be, even could be monkey bombs if you haven't gotten the EMPs yet. But as long as it's 20 kills underneath of this pylon. Now, you'll know when the 20 kills are up. Even if you're not playing as Samuel, because the lights outside were, you know, the lights where you would teleport under with the denizens, the green lights and the lanterns around the map. The street lamps are going to glow green, but they're going to be a different kind of glow. They're going to be shooting all over the place, almost like they're surging with power, and that's what you're going to find. This is what I mean when I say they're glowing. They're going to be kind of shooting power all over the place going to be a little surge of electricity going on. And once that happens, all you need to do is take the EMP grenades that you have received from the box. And with the transit Easter egg, you can do it with anything above two players. I mean, I'm doing it on solo with the help of a mob. But if you want to do this legit, you're going to have two or more players in your game. And all you and the other person with their EMP has to do is go up to one of these with a teleporter. Take the first EMP out. Throw it. Jump. Throw the second one. And then with that, you have completed the Richthofen Easter egg on transit. And you'll know because these blue ores will start shooting from the lanterns and the tower will light up blue. And then with that, we can get off of this piece of dog shit and move on to Die Rise. Oh, damn it, Ted. Here we are on the lovely world of Die Rise and... I'm going to start off by showing you how to build the nav card table. And like I said, with transit, I would recommend that you just take a game to go build the nav card table before anything else. And then you can restart and basically have a game where you don't have to worry about the nav card table. But don't worry, this is a lot easier inside of this version of Die Rise. Or this version of a map, because transit was just horrendous with its locations. But Die Rise is actually pretty civil with its nav card locations. I'm going to show you that now. Now, starting off, the location of the nav card table in Die Rise is right underneath the spire by the dragon, and you'll just come down here and build it in the back. And your first part is actually going to be the wood piece, which will always spawn here. The board, you pick it up, add it here. And the bright side about this is that a lot of these parts are in the same area. The radio is going to be back here. You'll pick that up, and you'll go and add it. And then the meteor is going to always be in this trash pile. You will pick it up and then go ahead and add it. And then just to follow you through this way, we're going to end up going to the other side really quick. And then it will be down here on the right. The electrical box will be down there in that corner. And then you add all those parts and you'll build the nav card table right there. And then you can truly start to get started with your die rise run through. Now, to start off the die rise run through, you're going to need two items. You're going to need the trample steam and you're going to need the slickifier, as well as the SVU. You're going to buy that off the wall. But for right now, these parts will either spawn in a couple of different locations. Um, the, I guess, airbag, the thing that propels you. This can either spawn here, or it can spawn in here. And you can just pick these up in part, switch them off of the ledge where the table is down below. The engine will always spawn either here on the front, or it will spawn in that corner over there. Um, and then the flag will always spawn either here, or on the wall there. And then this, um, I guess, frame will always spawn either there or here. So all you gotta do is take these down and just part switch them down below. I mean, I'm I'm kind of dumb and I fell through the map, so forgive me for using tools for this, but I don't know what else you want from me. Um, by the way, I will have a link, I will have a link to all of these um, plutonium mods in the description for these solo easter eggs. And then you could do it yourself as well. You don't have to do a four-person Easter egg like on Buried or Die Rise. Um, so Die Rise and Buried are four-player Easter eggs, but the only problem is is that the servers aren't really populated anymore with people who want to do Easter eggs. So it makes sense, but I would download these mods and you can do them on your own. But once you part switch all the parts down here, you're going to want to take them to this table. Just pick them all up. 
And then there's really only one other buildable on this map, which is the Slickifier. But that's a pretty easy build as well. I'll show you all the part locations for that. And then once you build the Trample Steam, pick it up, take it. And then we'll be on to the Slickifier. With the Slickifier, all you're going to have to do is come down this elevator, which is the same way you would take to power, which is also step one. But you're going to fall down here. And, I don't know, I always like to pick up a key just to insert this and send it back up, just in case I'm ever in spawn again. But, that's up to you. Um, there's the fridge, there's the bank as well. Uh, so, here's going to be your first location for the base of it. It could either be on this table or down below by the build for the circle fire. And this is also going to be step one, which is just turn on the power. The power switch is literally through that first door. And then you can take your elevators down. And I know Richtofen's going crazy right now. Here's the table as well. Richtofen's going crazy because that also is the first step, having all four players in the game stand on these symbols and these different elevators. One is here, uh, right next to the Slick of Fire wall by. Not wall by, but build location. Uh, here's the second part, the handle. The handle can be found here, or it can be found up near the power on a table, which I'll show you when I go grab the gas canister. The third part, which is the stock, which is a, a mannequin's foot, can always be found here, up the stairs from the wall, um, from the wall build. And then with that, the final part is the gas tank. Or, well, it looks like a gas tank, but if anything, it's more of a air pressure container. But it's like a fire extinguisher base. It could either be on that table or down below in the cages. And this is also the second part of the handle that could spawn down here. So, yeah, with that, those are the four parts of the Slickle Fire and their locations. Um, and with that, you're going to see the sickle fire being built there you go there's your sickle fire now we're going to also move on to step two which is igniting all four symbols now i'm going to slow down the video and show you where each of these are but there's one here in this perk machine elevator one gold symbol up here it'll light up when all four players are standing on it simultaneously or if you're like me and you have a mod it will light up when you stand on it the second gold symbol, the one you saw me stand on earlier, is in this elevator shaft with the bowie knife. And it'll be on the top of that elevator. The third and fourth uh, elevator gold symbols are going to be in the quick revive elevator at the part right here. Or it's going to be in this elevator on the left, near, which will be Speed Cola or it will be Who's Who. Now with this, we're going to lead on to step three. And step three is another gold symbol matching step, but essentially around the map, you're going to have these four gold circles on the ground. They're not going to be in the elevators. That's how you distinguish between them. And you're going to have to trial and error a four code sequence. And what I mean by that is you have to step on one of them, and that one's going to light up. And then if you step on another and it's not the right one, then the first one will turn off. And you have to turn it back on and basically do this until you get the right order. So I will show you the first four. This one is the first one, and as you can see, it didn't light up when I stepped on it. So let's go find the others. And the other one's going to be up here. The second location is by Quick Revive, and as you can see, it didn't light up when I stepped on it, which is fine. The third location, oh, also, here's the SVU wall by. This is what you'll need in preparation for step four. But the third location for this gold symbol on the floor is here in this little storefront room. And you're going to step on it and see what I mean. It'll light up. That's the first symbol in the order. And you have to keep doing that trial and error until all four symbols are lit up around the map. Okay? And with that, we're going to go show you the fourth symbol. And the fourth symbol is going to be just up across the way. Um, it's actually kind of funny because it's quite legitimately all the way down here and it's on the roof in between the Slickle Fire Power Bank area and that's your symbol. 
So if you could see, if this were a four-player game and I went on that symbol and it didn't light up, then the first one I lit up would turn off and I'd have to light all four of them up again. All right, so that was step three. Step four is going to be shooting the balls out of the mouths of the dragons with the SVU. Pretty simple. You just aim there, shoot, and the balls will transport up to spawn. And inside of spawn, this is where you'll need your slick of fire for the Richtofen side. This is where it deviates too between Maxis and Richtofen, but you don't want that to happen, so you're going to take Richtofen. So you're going to shoot 20 shots of the slick of fire onto the balls. Now, why is it 20 shots? I don't know, but Mr. Telexify and Dobby and those, uh, there's another creator, and I forget his name, and I feel so bad, but they're remaking Die Rise, and they're going to make it one shot. But basically, you're going to put 20 shots into each of these balls, and you're going to essentially place it into a spinning ball on the pedestal. So it's going to be spinning, like the one is on the right. When both of them are spinning, that is when step five is completed. Okay, so with that, which I should do a couple more shots here because for some reason half the time it doesn't work. Alright, and both of them are spinning. That's step five done. And then we're going to move on with that to step six. And with that, step six is a fun step. You get to take your trample steam and go put it on symbols around the map. And you get to put it down, essentially fling a bunch of zombies towards the tower... Uh, you'll know when it's right because Richtofen will make quotes when you place it down right, but essentially you place it over the symbol facing towards the tower and you're going to either fling 10 zombies or just honestly stand on it 10 times. That's a really good way to get it done. All you have to do is walk up and jump and you do that about 10 or 12 times and then the tower will get struck by blue lightning and that'll be preparation for the final step which is inputting the Mahjong tile code. Now, the other location for these f trample steam flings there's one there on the right uh on the little balcony there was one back there next to the other location that i have and then the other one is up there near quick revive and spawn now in a four player game that's where you put all of them and you all push them towards the tower and keep flinging but with that we get essentially on to the next step and that next step is going to be waiting until this tower is struck by lightning and then we can do the legendary mahjong step so as you can see the tower was now struck by the blue lightning and now has four blue sides and now for everybody's favorite step the mahjong steps now i will explain this very easily i'm going to put a picture on screen that basically shows the symbols that you need to find around the map and what you need to match them up with now each of these symbols is color coded and you're going to have one, two, three, and four as four of the Mahjong tiles, and then four directions as the other four Mahjong tiles. Now, I'm going to show you in-game where all these locations are, but then I'm also going to show you how you decipher it. So all of these directional tiles have colors associated with them. They might be the ones on the screen. They might not be. And these colors associate with the other Mahjong tiles that have numbers on them. And so if you see, say, in this picture, north is black, and the tile for three is also colored black. So that means that north is the third direction hit. The same thing goes for the east tile. If the east tile is red and number two, which is the second position is red, that means the east is hit second. So this code on screen would be south, east, northwest, and you would input that into the tower. Now I'm going to show you what it is in my game. I'm going to go through all the locations really quick, and then I will input it into the spire with the galva knuckles into the locations that it is in my game. So with my game, and with every game, north is always going to be a tile on the front of the spire, signifying that this is the northern direction at the front. So it goes north, east, south, west, cardinal directions. So north in my game is black. So that's the first location, and it's always going to be there. Let's go up to spawn. Another location can be on this desk, and as you can see, that means that is four. So red, whatever's colored red in a direction, is the fourth direction to be hit, the last one. There can also be one down here, which is west. West is blue, okay. So there could also be another one down below on this kind of 
I guess it's a counter, tabletop, bar area, something like that. And then you go down here, you go past the box, and there's one in this area, which is two, and two is blue, so that means west is our second one to hit. And then if you go down this elevator shaft, there could be one inside of this little room, as well as on the side here in the back. But there's also one down here. And I believe, if I get out a no clip here, that looks to be south. So that means, okay, south. South is green. So once we do that, we'll go down. And there might be one on this back ledge as well. You know, if you try to look for it. If it's not there, it's not there. Just keep going and continue on. And you also have one up here on the right. There could be a location. So that's that's east. So east is red and red is fourth. So that means that west is second and east is fourth in my game. Okay. And then there's also one down here in these this room down here, these sets of rooms. Um, there's one in this broken part of the wall. Um, well, there's one also up here on this uh, section up at the bench over here and this means that one is black so the first one is north so my code is northwest southeast but I'm also gonna keep searching for the other mahjong tile too so that you can get the other locations in a gist and understand where you're going so if you go through here there's a little back area there might be one on the side over here if you go and scope in, it could be up here on the side. could also be over here. There's a, a bunch of locations that these could be in. And I don't say a bunch. There's really only eight locations these things can be in. They just switch every game. So with that, I mean, we have northeast, northwest, southeast in my game. And we can look for the other tile location, which is up here that might be on this table. You can look for a tile. There also might be one on this table on the right. It could be over here, um, but it's not. I believe there can also be one over here, but don't quote me on this one. Um, but essentially, those are the locations that I can remember as of right now. Oh. My bad. I just remembered one in the process of filming this. Um, there's also one that can spawn here on the counter. If it's not there, then it could also be in this room. I believe it's on the f it's on the floor somewhere. Me struggling to remember where these are. Bear with me here. You just have to really look. But like I said, once you get the main six down, you pretty much know what your directions are going to be. And you can pretty much trial and error it as well. But yeah, so. I'm going to flash forward to when I actually have money for Galva Knuckles. And then we can um, keep this show on the road. And there can also be a location here on these chairs. Grabbing me some Galva Knuckles, which is in the AN94 kind of stretch of elevator shafts that are like building shafts, and you drop down, and it's the place you go to get to the AN94. Once you have your code, you're going to take it up, and my code is northwest, southeast, so I'm going to go north at the front, west at the left side, south at the back side, and then east. And then that's that's the egg. And you'll know you completed it, you'll hear a completion node, and you will get all your perks. So yeah, that, my friend, is Die Rise. And with that, we are on to Buried. Congratulations if you stuck around this long. Also, this is what it looks like when you insert a nav card. That's the correct one. It just says the nav card was accepted successfully, it gives you a little noise, and then you can move on with your day. Now, with Buried, you're going to need three things for the Richtofen side. You're going to need the Paralyzer, you're going to need the Time Bomb, and you're also going to need just a maybe a little bit more powerful weapon, like a Ray Gun, Ray Gun Mark II, 
Something like that. This, you're also going to want to open up the church to get Vulture Aid, because you're going to need Vulture Aid for the Wisp Zep. Vulture Aid is in the church. Go ahead, pick it up. You're going to need it to see the Wisp for the hitting the sign step. So with buried we're going to start off with the nav card table so a lot of the parts are behind that barrier over there so what you're going to do is give Leroy some booze and he's going to go run into that and the radio will be right here the board will be right here and the electric box will be up here on the wall and then another thing with Leroy that you'll have to get is the fountain open and then once you get that open you will be able to jump back to the spawn where the nav card table build is and you'll know exactly where that is also once you get the fountain open you just have to jump through here with your nav card parts and it'll transmit you over here and this is where you build the nav card table now every nav card part is in the bottom of the map aside from the meteor which is right here by the lockers and then you can insert your diarize nav card, it's accepted successfully, and there you go, you're good on that front. As always, with all steps of Easter eggs, you start off by turning on the power, and that is in the candy store, above the steps, and it's right here. And there you go. There's the power. So, with the first step of the Richthofen Easter egg out of the way by turning on the power, the second step would be to build the guillotine. So you're going to come down into the barn for the first part, which is an antenna. And I would take this exact path. Just run back through this little area. And you're going to run through these mines. And basically, when you come to this jump over here, you're going to jump across to the saloon. You're going to come up here. You see this? This is the second part. Part switch it off. And then go up into the mines. And then when you go up into the mines, you're going to not fall. You're going to jump across. And then you're going to part switch it off. This crystal, which is the third part. Let me make sure you clear out the way. Switch it on over. And then the fourth part, which is going to be a nice easy one inside of the gunsmith shop near where all the chalk is. It's going to be over here. And you're going to just switch this final part out. I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, I could go find it. So you come up here to the guillotine over by the side of the saloon. And you just keep adding these parts on since you have all four in the area now. And it's kind of just a part switch session. So there you go. And with that, we're going to move on to second, the second, second step, oh my, we're going to move on to the third step, which is finding these orbs and powering them with the paralyzer. Okay. Go up into the mines, and then you're going to go on the right, and there's going to be one there. Okay, there's the second one. Okay. Do what I do and jump and make it like an absolute badass. And then you're going to spam it. Okay, that's three out of four. And then the fourth one is going to be past the witch's house. Just a little bit out of the back to the left. And with that, the fourth one is going to be in the back of the witch's house on the left. And you just have to spam it. And there you go. And then Richthofen should say, there should be a little lantern floating around. So you're going to want to go and get that little lamp and bring it back to the witch's house and fill it up with ghost souls. With that second step done, you're going to come over here and some part of the map there's going to be a blue lantern floating around. You just have to cook a grenade and throw it. And then the lantern will fall. You can pick it up. And then you go straight from there into the witch's house. And you need about 10 witches to really get this. 
I'm going to be quiet during this section so you can really hear the sound that the witches make when they give you any kind of energy. A little lantern symbol has popped up and this is where you're going to place the filled lantern and once you add this part onto the roof this little cipher is going to pop up now a lot of people get really confused on this and i'm going to make this so simple for you you're not even going to think about it anymore so essentially these little crosses these little symbols are all part of a giant numerical pad if you've ever used a flip phone, if you've used a Nokia, if you've used any kind of pad with numbers, even on iPhone, they have letters by the numbers. So ABC is 1, DEF is 2, GHI is 3, G3. So this is the G section, which is one of the G parts of the, the cipher. So whatever starts with G is what we're going to hit with our arm. Okay, same thing with down here, GHI, we go to this one, is JKL. So that's going to be the Lunger Undermines one. This one is ABC, so it's C, we look at it, well if this is JKL, then the middle is MNO, so this would be CON, because that's N right next to O, so Consumption Cross, guarantee it, or Construction Cross. So with that, you're going to want to go up into the mines after you get... A, either a bowie knife or a galva knuckles. It really doesn't matter whichever you get, as long as you get something. And then you can head up into the mines. And with that, you can really start to cook on this next section. With this, once you have the bowie knife or the galva knuckles, whichever your choice is, you're going to want to come up and you're going to want to look at these signs. And I'll show you the five locations. This is where dry gulcher staff is, if that's one of your sayings that's one of your ciphers down there this is where lunger undermines is which one of mine is so i'm going to hit it and knife it and it's going to start glowing red it's smeared with blood and forgive me for falling out of the hole i just had and with that you're going to also come up here this is where consumption crosses if that's one of your ciphers you want to knife it which it was one of mine so i knifed it and because you have Vulture, you can actually see this wisp that's going to come up here soon, and all you have to do is follow it. Now, this is my last one, Groundbiter Pits, but I'm not going to hit it yet because I'm going to show you where Bone Orchard Vein is, which is right over there. So, with this, we're going to have Groundbiter Pits start to be active in a second. I'm going to hit it. The wisp is going to come out of the wall. It might take a second to spawn, but once you get it, you just keep running it. And you have to just keep finding it through walls. It'll show up everywhere. You'll be able to see it regardless. It follows the same path pretty much every time. All you have to do is just keep running. Open a couple doors if you need to. Do what you gotta do. This one's in the upper portion of the candy shop. And then once it gets to around here, this is about the last area you actually have to push it to, because then it'll go to the guillotine. Once it gets to the guillotine, just go to the end here and hit it, and then it'll show up. And then zombies will start glowing blue, and you have to kill the ones that glow blue. You have to do this for five zombies, and once you get it done for five zombies, the step will be complete, and you can move on to round infinity with the time bomb, which is what you need. For the next step, all you'll have to do is get all four of your players to stand around the time bomb on the guillotine. All you have to do is go up and then detonate the time bomb, and essentially what's going to happen... You're going to have to... Sorry, I had to turn that along. I'll leave that somewhere in the blooper reel. So you're going to go around and just search your dead corpses until you find a switch. They're going to be pretty obvious on the ground. You'll see them. Like 
Once you find the switch, you just have to just survive. And you can't kill anything, by the way. It there, it's around infinity. They have infinite health. Even the paralyzer doesn't kill them. So I actually really like this round. I love the concept of it. This is probably my favorite step in this entire Easter egg because it's just so well thought out, lore wise and Easter egg wise. But once you go back. You're going to add the part to the guillotine. Once you add the switch, now comes the steps in the maze, which is essentially you get to flip randomly, flip levers in the maze, and hope that you get the right four, four color combo. So let's just take a little bit of a journey over there. Uh, just try not to hurt, die, try not to die. So, I'm going to say, like, randomly, I'm going to hit these four levers. I'm going to hit blue. I'm going to find green. That's yellow. See, this is the one part about the maze that I've always disliked, is that you could literally go around forever, and you wouldn't be able to find them. Okay, so, then red, and then yellow. So, if I get one in the right order, one of them will spark, but obviously none of them sparked. Okay, that's fun. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the uh, witch's house to reset it. I'm going to go back through, and hopefully, what it will like to do is reset the maze for me, and I can do my order again. But this time, I'm going to do green second or green first, and then I'm going to do blue second, and etc, etc, until I get it right. So, yeah. This step really is kind of annoying on solo. I mean, it was not designed for that, which is, you know, it's fine, but it just kind of, you know, got, it just kind of got me, because it was like, damn, I have to sit here turning levers, hoping that one of them is going to work, in order for it to actually send me through the step and complete it. Okay, none of them sparked again. Okay. How about red? Maybe red's first this time. I'm going to fast forward until I get this right, and then I will come back when I actually get it right. Okay? Ah, look at that. So mine was red, yellow, blue, green for the switches. But now that you've gotten that done, and like I said, it's trial and error, so you just have to really try... So, now is everybody's favorite step, the sharpshooter step. Now, on screen, I'm going to have all four perspectives of what it would look like. But essentially, in the fountain, you hold F to make a wish, and these sharpshooter targets will pop up. Now, with the mod I have installed, it will finish it regardless anyways. But when you have four players, you have to have all four players shoot each one of their targets in the four areas with 100% accuracy. Meaning, you cannot miss a target. Um, you can miss it with, you can spray more than one bullet into it, but you have to hit all your targets. So, the first area is this candy store. The second area is over here by the witch's house, up on the witch's house on the left side. The third area is in the spawn-ish area. You, best place to sit is like right here, and it's all on this area, encompasses. And then the last one's inside of the saloon. Best place to sit is right up here or on this ledge and shoot them all. And I'm going to have that play out soon. And then once that happens, you finish the Easter egg.
huge shout out to the, all those guys I caught that footage from. That was from a game I did about six, seven years ago at like five in the morning. And these guys were troopers. They stuck around the entire two hours it took us to hit all of our targets. So I appreciate you guys. I don't know where you're at today, but I, I love those public matches and I love joining it. And I'm glad you guys stuck with me basically being a bossy squeaker. With that, the Easter egg is done. That is the finish of Buried. And assuming you have put all the nav cards in correctly and done all your Easter eggs, you have done the Richthof and BO2 Super Easter Egg. Um, assuming all four players in your lobby have done it. Congratulations, and I'm going to let this play out. And I'm going to let it take the cake. Now, with that, that is the Richthofen endgame. He essentially takes over the ether again, mends the rift, and he has ultimate power. So he switches into Sam Samuel's body in order to experience what it is being human again so he can jump back and forth. Now, that is the BO2 Richthofen Super Easter Egg for the Victus maps. I appreciate you sticking around with me as long as you have, if you have... And I hope this helps you in the future. And please leave any constructive criticism that you can in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and comment. You know, I love you all. I appreciate it. Even if no one sees this video. Even if I can help one person. That's all I care. Alright. With that, peace out.